Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Liz. In today's video, I am going to share with you my top 30 trash to treasure DIYs. Anything from things that I already had at home that I wanted to give, you know, a good refresher to, to things that I thrifted and turning them into beautiful pieces of home decor. So I hope that you guys enjoy them. Get your crafting stuff out. Let's craft together and let's jump into our first DIY. This first one is a little tray that I got off of Amazon a while back. I had wanted some sort of tray for my bed, whether that was me working or, you know, having a little me time with some dinner or breakfast in my bed. <laughs> but I wanted to jazz it up a little bit. It's just so plain that I wanted to make it look really cute whether I have it on my bed or on my table. So I'm going to start by using some painter's tape and just taping off all around the edges of my tray because I do want the handle and the edges to stay that natural wood color. And I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in white. Now my tall bottles of Waverly paint, I've had them for a little bit and they're getting a little funky. So I've had to add some water to them to make them not so thick. And there's also been little clumps in them. So you'll see in this video me trying to work around that. I need to go pick up some more paint, but I just wanted to use the rest of what I had. So I'm going to start by adding one layer. I do have to do about two to three coats of this just because it was watered down a little bit. It wasn't as thick as the Waverly paint normally is. And then for any kind of little bumps or clumps, I'm going to take my sandpaper to it as well to try to smooth that down at the end. I definitely could have run out to the store and grabbed some new paint and that would have, you know, helped the process a little bit, <laughs> but I was feeling too lazy and I just wanted to use up what I got. So here it is. So like I said, I just did two to three coats of this Waverly chalk paint, used my heat gun in between coats to get that dry because I do not have the time to wait for each coat of paint to dry. I've got three kids. I don't have time to wait for paint to dry. After that was all dry, I'm just gonna remove that painter's tape. And I cut out a design using my Cricut. I got this SVG from Etsy. It was from the shop, The Minty Rose, and it's a farmhouse tile SVG farmhouse patterns. And I thought this pattern was super, super cute. So I duplicated this pattern six times, welded it all together and created this stencil. Now I did not have any stencil vinyl on hand. So I just used some non-permanent vinyl and I'm just gonna use my Expressions Vinyl Trans Transfer tape, Expressions Vinyl is where I get all my transfer tape and my vinyl. This transfer tape is some of my absolute favorite. I always get questions about it. It comes in a six inch and a 12 inch roll, which is fantastic in my opinion. So I'm just gonna go through and trim up my design so that I can get it to fit on the inside of my tray. And I just have to do little trims to each side. Now when placing this on, I typically would use my wax paper as a way to make sure that I could get my design onto the tray as best as I could without it all sticking down. I decided to be lazy this time and not do that and I didn't get it quite the way that I wanted it onto my tray, but that was okay because I just fixed it in the end by just hand painting it a little bit. So I just took the back part of my vinyl off placed my vinyl onto my tray and then removed that transfer tape from the vinyl. So one of my little tricks to stenciling is to paint over your stencil, especially with a stencil like this where it's vinyl and it's completely stuck down. I take the base color, which is that white chalk paint, and I go over the entire stencil and that's going to help prevent bleeding and any kind of paint getting underneath that stencil. So I always do a thin layer of the base coat on top of the stencil first. I'm going to take some more painter's tape and I'm going to paint around my tray. I don't know why I thought that I didn't need to do that, but I'm going to tape it back up all the way around. 
I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in mineral and I'm just going to paint over that stencil. I'm going to do dabbing up and down motions and then I am just doing light coats over the entire thing. You don't want to go too heavy handed and you don't want to do swiping back and forth motions because that is just going to give you more of a chance for your paint to bleed underneath that vinyl. And I'm just going to do this over the entire stencil and I did do about two coats of it. I wasn't aiming to get it absolutely perfect. I wanted it to kind of look a little bit more rustic and distressed. For those edges that I didn't get completely centered, I'm just taking a small detailed brush and continuing the pattern all the way to the edge and painting in just so that there isn't a line where it just, you know, completely cuts off from the pattern if that makes sense. So now I'm just taking my weeding tool and taking off all of the vinyl stencil from the entire thing once that paint is dry. And the one thing I do like about chalk paint is I can let this dry without having a ton of paint chip off as I'm taking that vinyl off. Now I'm just going to remove that painter's tape and then to seal it all in to make sure that the paint doesn't scratch off when I'm putting things on top of the tray, I'm going to add a layer of protection. I'm just going to use some Mod Podge. It's just the matte Mod Podge and I just did two layers over the entire thing. You could obviously use whatever kind of sealer or protectant that you want on top of this, but this is the way my tray turned out and I could not be happier. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I grabbed several different kind of jars and bottles. This one particularly I got for $1.49, which I thought was a really great deal. I'm going to remove that sticker, clean off the bottle with a baby wipe, and then I'm going to grab this chalk paint from Folk Art in Sage. I think this is such a beautiful color. And I wanted to try my hand at making a textured paint. So I'm going to add some baking soda to my paint. I did about even parts, I would say. And I made it into about a paste is what the consistency I would describe it as. And I have seen other people do this technique and it makes their bottles look so Pretty. So I knew I had to try it. I wanted that kind of concrete, ceramic kind of look to these pieces. So I just went through and painted the entire bottle in this mixture. And I did have to do about two coats on each piece that I'm going to be painting. Now I like my decor to kind of all match and go together. So you're going to see this color and correlating colors throughout this video because that's just what I like to do. <laughs> Anytime I'm doing DIYs, I want everything to be cohesive and to match. And then I'm going to take this same color and with this really cute little picture, I am going to paint this one. It was $2.49 and I purchased all of these from Goodwill and I think these are so cute. I'm pretty sure these are like you know, for tea or coffee. I'm not a tea or coffee drinker, so I am no expert on what these are used for. Cream milk is uh, what my guess would be. But I am just going to give this two coats of paint as well. And then I picked up another one of these for $1.49 
and I just did a little concoction of a couple different paint colors and just mixed them together until I got the color that I wanted and then added some more baking soda and then I'm just going to paint this. Now I wanted a couple taller bottles which I don't know why I didn't look for these while I was at for Goodwill but I had a couple bottles at home, one that had just been sitting around for a long time, and then a couple glass pieces from the Dollar Tree that I already had on hand. So I'm going to paint those as well. So I just did this color, I did another cream color, and painted them all the same. If they were big and open like this, I did make sure to paint the inside a little bit so that you couldn't really tell that you know, it, it wasn't the same color on the inside. And that's all I did for these. I think these turned out so, so cool. Another thing that you can do, which I did for my last piece, was kind of play around with the texture a little bit with my paintbrush. Instead of brushing it on, I did kind of a dabbing motion. There's so many different things that you could do, and I think these all turned out really, really awesome. So I'm definitely going to be trying this technique a lot more in the future on other things because I think that they are so fun and they are so pretty to display in your home. I just, I'm obsessed. I love it and I can see myself using this in a lot more DIYs. Life is a winding road no telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind if you guys are new to my channel, my name is Liz. I love all things DIY and crafting. I do trust or treasures, Dollar Tree DIYs, wood DIYs, any kind of DIY that you can think of. I am doing it here on my channel. You can also check out my shop on my website if you'd like. I create wood DIY kits that you guys can purchase and paint and put the kits together for yourself. They are so much fun to do. So I will leave a link to my website in the description box below if you would like to check it out. For this next one, I got this flower from Goodwill. It was $2.50. I'm sure it's probably like a garden steak. And then I picked up this long welcome sign from Dollar Tree. I'm going to start by removing all of the twine. And then I used some plaster from the Dollar Tree just to fill in those holes. I'm going to set that to the side to dry and I'm just going to start painting my flower. So I started with white. I wanted to use this more of as a primer so that I went in with my color. It wouldn't take so many coats of my color to cover everything up. And then I'm going to go in with this yellow shade from Apple Barrel. You can pick this up at Walmart. And I want to say this is the sunset shade of yellow. I really love this. It's a good just mustardy kind of shade. And I did do about two coats of this on all of the petals. I left the middle portion white. And then I will go in with my Waverly Chalk Paint and Truffle for the middle section there. Now I wanted to do some detailing and make everything, you know, not look super flat, add some dimension to my flower. So I'm going to take the maize colored Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to dry brush it starting from the petal and dragging it towards the middle. 
and I did this so that it would like I said give it some more dimension make it not look so flat and I love the way that this looks I was looking at some sunflower pictures online and I noticed a lot of the outer petals were lighter and then it just got darker towards the middle so that's where I was kind of going with this and then I took some white paint on a really detailed brush and I just dragged that from the middle out in between each of those little petal lines and I didn't want this to be too harsh so I will go in with my paintbrush that had some of my darker yellow paint on it just to kind of blend that in a little bit more and then on the middle there I'm just taking the back of a brush and I'm dabbing it into my Waverly chalk paint and hazelnut and just adding little dots here and there I didn't cover the entire thing And then for the leaves and the stem, I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint and moss. Now I was debating on going through and adding some lighter green to kind of define those leaves, but once it all dried, I actually loved the way it looked just as it is. I don't know what it was. Normally I would go in and add some more detail to it, but I just love the way that this one turned out. So I'll just finish painting all of that. And then I'm gonna go over to my welcome sign from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna grab that Craft Smart paint in plaster again. And I'm going to give this one coat. I didn't care if there was a little bit of that MDF showing through. I was doing it pretty messily, so it was just a messy coat of one coat of paint. And then I divided my sign into three sections, so I just measured two inches for each section and drew some lines with a pencil. And then to kind of define those lines a little bit more, I took my Waverly chalk paint in mineral and I just went over those lines with my paintbrush. And then I did end up sanding everything down afterwards as well so that the lines and the distressing looked a little bit more blended in, not super harsh. And then I just took my chip brush and dry brushed the entire sign, just up and down the entire thing. Once that's done, I'm gonna take these small round wooden pieces that I have. These are just leftover pieces from a laser machine and I'm going to add these to the back of my flower so that I'm able to hot glue this down to the sign. I wasn't really able to do that without it because not every piece of the flower lies flat so I just found where the pieces lie flat at and so it'll be all level and I just hot glued that down and that's it for this one. this DIY I found this sign now this was a little bit more on the expensive side again coming in at $7.49 I feel like my Goodwill always has their prices a little bit higher so I try to go on the days where certain colors are half off but when I saw this sign I thought it was super pretty and even if you just left it alone I thought that it was absolutely adorable I love the colors of it but the main thing that I loved about this was the frame. I loved the wood look of this frame and the texture and detail that it had. So I knew that I had to grab this one up and give it a little bit of a makeover into something that fit in with my home decor. So I just went in with some painter's tape and taped off that wood frame. I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in ink and I'm going to give my sign one coat of this paint. Now, once I removed the painter's tape, I did have to do a little bit of touching up here and there, but it wasn't too big of a deal. The frame was just enough of a distance that I could take a little brush and go all the way around it without touching that frame. 
Now I took my Waverly Wax and Antique again. I mostly just wanted to give the frame a little bit more of a lifted look, make it look more new. Some of the spots on the frame just looked really worn and adding the wax to it definitely gave it that lift that it needed, that extra little touch that it needed to make that wood really stand out. Now I grabbed this stencil from a pack of stencils that I purchased from Joann's. I just trimmed up the sides so that I could fit it into my sign. Use some painter's tape to get it all stuck down. And I went in with my Waverly chalk paint in agave again for the mason jar portion of the stencil. And I'm just taking this little sponge brush that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just doing up and down dabbing motions. I find that this works best when I'm stenciling rather than dragging your paintbrush or sponge across the stencil. That's just going to make the paint bleed underneath. And when I do it this way, I have the best kind of results. And I also made sure to do multiple light coats so I'm not going in with a ton of paint all at once. I'm going to dab my, my sponge on there and then I'm going to go around the entire thing and then I did that probably a good three to four times. Now for the inside of the mason jar I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint and plaster and this is just another kind of stencil brush and I'm going to go over all the words and that little heart in the plaster color. Again just doing multiple light coats. And that is it for this super cute sign. I thought this would be absolutely adorable to display in my kitchen, either on top of my cabinets or on a wall in my kitchen. I just think it's so cute. Kind of wanted it to have that chalkboard look to it. And I didn't have any chalk to kind of rub over the sign, but I thought my brush strokes that were left on the sign made it kind of look a little bit chalkboardy so in the end I thought this turned out absolutely adorable and I cannot wait to put it in my kitchen. For this one, I picked up this old house that had a light bulb at the top. I paid $2.49 for it, and I saw so much potential in this one, so I decided to first remove that light bulb at the top, and I was able to just cut the cord to it and remove the cord completely, and I also removed the other piece to the light bulb out from the top so you will have a hole in here but to me it's not that big of a deal especially where I keep it high up on my shelf you won't even be able to see it so first I'm gonna remove the heart from the front of the house now when I did that it did leave a little bit of an indent in it and then there was also a crack at the top so I'm just going to give everything a good sanding and then I'm gonna take some wood filler and try to fill in that crack at the top and then for the indent, try to just smooth that over as best as I can. Now I'm going to take some of this folk art chalk paint in white and I'm just going to give the entire thing a good two to three coats. I did have to do multiple coats because of the dark color to it. I did not paint the door so I'm going to leave that alone for now but I'm just going to paint everything else white. And then I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in celery and that's what I'm going to use to paint the door and I did give that a good couple of coats. Now I tried my best to draw some lines for some windows on here. I didn't do a very good job so in the end I just sanded it down and then repainted it with that celery color. And then I just used a paint stir stick with a ruler to try to paint some little windows on the front. Just some black squares. And then I'm just going to go through and give it all a nice distressing. So just hitting all the sides with some sandpaper and just 
given it a little bit more dimension to my house. Now I'm gonna take some twine and some gray buffalo check ribbon and I'm gonna tie that around the top portion of the house, tie it in a double knot, and then I'll do the exact same thing with the twine, wrapping it around and tying that in a double knot. And then to finish off the house, I'm going to take some more of that gray buffalo check ribbon. I'm going to tie a simple little bow and I'm going to hot glue it to the front of the door. And that is it for this adorable farmhouse little house. I found this wooden book holder and I thought this was so so cute it was $31.50 and I just knew that I could probably find something really similar in an antique shop so I went over to an antique shop in my area it's called the brass armadillo it's a huge antique shop filled with so many booths and I found so many farmhouse styled booths and I just thought they had so many beautiful things and I just happened to be able to find a wooden book holder like this in the shape of a cutting board and I just thought this was perfect. So the first thing I did was take it out to my garage and I did sand down those foil details on there and I'm gonna grab my Waverly chalk paint and plaster. An amazing subscriber sent this to me because I haven't been able to find Waverly in my local Walmart and they were sweet enough to send me some so thank you and i'm just going to lightly paint this i want this piece to look distressed and worn and rustic that's going to be the theme of all of my projects today so what i'm going to do is mainly focus my paint towards the bottom and then drag my brush with the remaining paint towards the top and then i also do that same thing at the top focus at the top drag it down towards the middle and i just really like the way that this made the cutting board look made it look very rustic and distressed and old <laughs> and that's what I was going for Now for that front piece, I really liked that color for it and I thought that the plaster color and this kind of golden oak color really went well together but I just kind of wanted to make it pop a little bit more so I'm going to grab a little cup of water and some caramel colored apple barrel paint and I just mix that together to kind of make my own stain and I went over that front piece several times just to really make that color pop out. I wanted the wood grain to still show and all of the little dents and scratches that the wood had. I didn't want that to be covered up so I just made my own stain and I think it looked really really great. Now I didn't want to leave this plain and the original item on Antique Farmhouse had a design on it so I decided to break out my Cricut Joy and create a stencil. Now you could obviously do this with any kind of stencil that you have or maybe you have some stickers that you want to use anything will definitely work I decided to go in more of a farmhouse theme for this one so I am just going to weed out all of the pieces that you would normally leave in with a decal so I'm going to take out all of my letters you'll want to make sure that you leave the little pieces in your letters like for the a and the o all those middle pieces it's just going to be just like a stencil when you go out and to the store and you buy a stencil, you want to take out the pieces that you want painted. And then I'm just going to transfer it onto my cutting board with my Expressions Vinyl Transfer Tape. You guys know how much I love this one. It's my absolute favorite and I always have it linked down below. So I just transferred my stencil 
and I centered it as best as I possibly could, removed the transfer tape, and then I wanted to do this technique that I did on a previous video to stencil, and I absolutely love the way that this looks. So I'm going to take a sponge, I get it wet, I squeeze out the excess water, and then I take my paint, dab it on there, and then start stenciling onto my piece. This creates the most beautiful, barely there kind of stained effect. If you're wanting your words and letters to look crisp and clear and you know, bold in there, this definitely isn't the way to go. You want to make sure that you just use like a stencil brush to do your stenciling, but a wet sponge, I feel like just makes this look so rustic and weathered and I just absolutely love it. So I'm going to remove all of my vinyl from the cutting board and then I wanted it to be just a little bit more weathered and matching all the distressed on the cutting board. So I just took some sandpaper, went over a couple times, I added some twine around the top of the cutting board again and hot glued the ends in the back and I love this piece. I think it turned out really, really pretty. I only paid $4.25 for this item, so I feel like I absolutely scored and it looks gorgeous. I picked up these four mirrors from Goodwill quite a while back. I mean, it's probably been a year or so. You can see I attempted to refinish them. I had an idea in my head and then I didn't like it and then I put them away and they have been sitting in my cube organizer for a very, very long time. So I was contemplating whether to get rid of them or to think of something different. And I'm actually really excited about this project. So I just taped up all the mirrors for all four pieces and I started painting them with my Waverly chalk paint and plaster. And I had to do about four to five coats of paint on this to cover up that blue and to get everything looking nice. It took me absolutely forever, but the end result I think is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm super happy that I decided not to toss these and to just refinish them. Now, these are Ikea mirrors. I can't remember the name of them, but there are Ikea stickers on the back of them. So you could probably still find these at Ikea, I'm guessing. You know, they basically have the same stuff all the time, but I believe I picked these up for about a dollar each at Goodwill. After I've removed that painter's tape, I just kind of clean them up a little bit. So my husband and I got these furring strips from Lowe's. I believe that they were three quarters of an inch by an inch inch, I want to say. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll leave the measurements on the screen right here. And I decided that I wanted to make these mirrors one big show piece. I wanted it to be a big piece on my wall that I could display. So we kind of went through and just figured out what we wanted to do with them. There really wasn't any like good measuring to it. We just kind of winged it. So we started off by cutting four of those strips down to make a square frame. There was about an inch and a half in between each of those mirrors. My husband went out and used his nail gun to nail that frame together. Now we're gonna take the remaining of those strips and we're just going to put them diagonally underneath that frame. And like I said, we just kind of eyeballed this. We didn't do any measurements between each of those strips. So they're not exactly perfect. We just kind of got it to where we thought it looked good. The majority of it's gonna be covered up anyway, but I thought that this would be such a fun way to display these mirrors out. So we just added those mirrors in, played around with it, tried to decide what we liked. Once we got an idea of how we wanted it to look like, my husband drew lines around all of those furring strips where they met up with the frame. And then he took those out to his saw and he just started cutting each piece down. Thank you. 
After we've got all of those cut out, he's just going to take his nail gun and start nailing all of those to the frame. Once all of that was put together, I'm going to take my Craftsmart stain in brown. I love this stain because it is water-based. It does not have the nasty smell that regular stain does. That stuff just gives me a really bad headache. So when I'm using stain, this is the kind that I prefer to use. And it's really easy to get off your fingers. So I just picked mine up from Michaels. And I'm just going to stain this entire piece in this color. You're going to use it just like you would a regular stain, wipe it on there with a brush or a foam brush, and then remove the excess with a cloth or a paper towel. So that's what I do just around the entire piece. Now once all of that is dry, I'm going to lay my mirrors on top of there and with a white pencil, I'm just going to mark about where each mirror is going to be placed so that I can add my hot glue on there without hot glue just being absolutely everywhere and you being able to see it. So I just mark around where each mirror was going to be. I am using a wood glue hot glue I get off of Amazon. I will have that linked down below. And this glue is so much stronger than your typical hot glue, so that is why I would recommend this. And then after we hot glued it, my husband also took it outside and added some nails through the back just to give it that extra support. And that is it for this project. I think that this is so pretty. It's so rustic and farmhouse. I put it right up above my vanity where I do my makeup and my hair, get ready for the day. And I think this piece is just exactly what that space needed. I think it's so fun. Each furring strip was about $1.85, I want to say. So in total, this piece cost me like less than $20 if you're including the price that I paid for all four mirrors. I feel like if you were to buy something like this at a different store, it would cost so much more than that. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out and I'm really happy that I decided to not toss these out. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly so again, I picked up this piece from my local Goodwill. It was $4.49. I'm gonna use my heat gun to get that sticker off to lessen the amount of goo and stickiness that is on it. This works every time for me. I'm gonna go through with a baby wipe and get this thing completely clean because this was a bit of a mess. It had been sitting around in my bedroom for probably about a year now and even still when I picked it up it was slightly gross. So I made sure to get it all nice and clean. And then I'm going to take this hazelnut chalk paint from Waverly and I'm going to give the bottom half just a messy coat of paint. In the picture on their website the border of it on the top is very messy. There's you know pieces that are higher than each other ridges and dips and it just has that old rusty kind of look to it which I absolutely love so this was perfect for me because I was able to be super unperfect <laughs> and have it still look good so I just went through gave it one coat and then I'm gonna dry it with my heat gun before I apply my second coat I've noticed with pieces like this if you start painting your second coat too soon it's gonna start removing that first coat. So you want to make sure that your first coat is completely dry before you end up going over it a second time. And then I'm just going to take my brush and kind of dab around here and there around the tops, the rim, the sides, the handles. I'm just kind of eyeing it, trying to see what looks good. I ended up taking a wipe and removing the parts that I didn't like. And I just love the ability to be able to play around with this. And if I didn't like it, I could remove it. 
And then I waited an entire night, I let it dry, and then I went back over it with a third coat of paint. And what I did here, which I absolutely love, is as your chalk paint is drying, I am dragging my brush right back over it and it creates this beautiful texture that I thought that this part of the pot just absolutely needed and I think that it turned out so so adorable. I absolutely love this piece. For this one, this has got to be one of my all-time favorite DIYs. This is still sitting on my kitchen counter in my kitchen, and I just, I love it. So I grabbed this clock from Goodwill. I only paid, I think, 3 or $4 for it, and I'm just going to start by removing the clock itself. I just removed the back and then removed the clock. I'm going to take a wipe to wipe the entire thing down. I also took some sandpaper just to kind of rough it up a little bit and make sure that the paint was actually going to stick to it. And then I went over it with my Folk Art Chalk Paint in white and I gave it a good two to three coats. Now as that's drying, I'm going to take the clock face and I'm going to take some painter's tape and try to get that around the front of the clock as best as I can because I'm going to take some more chalk paint and go around the outside of the clock covering up that gold brass kind of color and I am going to use my Waverly chalk paint in mineral to outline the clock face. I was going to use a black color but I decided that I didn't want the harsh black and white and I feel like this just gave it that perfect farmhouse touch to it so I absolutely love that color so I just tried to paint that as best as I could I gave it a couple coats and then I'm gonna take my sandpaper and sand down all the edges of the clock just giving it a good distressing, roughing it up a little bit, giving it some more dimension so it doesn't just look so flat. So I just hit all the edges and anywhere that I thought would need some good distressing. And then after that, I'm just going to add my clock face back in. I added some new batteries to the back and reattached everything. And that's it for this DIY. I found this super cute bench several months back. In fact, I'm pretty sure at the beginning of the year and it had been sitting in my garage for quite some time and I finally decided to grab it out and clean it off and repurpose it. So I purchased this at Goodwill for $3.49. I just gave it a good cleaning and then I also gave it a good sanding just so that my paint would stick to it. It did kind of feel like it had some sort of top coat over it. So I wanted to make sure that I got that pretty much off so that my paint wouldn't have a hard time sticking to it. I thought this would be so cute to add onto my little farmhouse shelves and I could add other little decor pieces on top of it. So I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in agave. It did take quite a while to get into all the little cracks and crevices of this bench and I did have to go in with about a coat and a half of this paint. I didn't need it to be fully covered, just enough to make it look like it had been painted this color in the past and it was old and faded so that's the look that I was going for here. And I also love this color. I do have a lot of this color in my regular all year home decor where my family pictures are hung and other little pieces like that are this color in my home so I thought that this would match perfectly.
So after I've got all my coats that I want on there, I'm going to take my Waverly Wax and Antique and I am going to give this a super distressed look. Like I said, I wanted this to look old and rustic. I was going for more of a look where the paint was chipped and faded and the natural wood was peeking through so it looked like it had been painted this color. So I'm going to go in with that wax and hit all of my edges, all of my corners, and I'm really going to distress it so it almost looks looks like a faux wood. My inspiration for this piece is, I don't know if you've ever gone to a park or gone somewhere where there's just an old wooden bench sitting around and the paint is peeling off of it and it just looks old and worn. That is where I got my inspiration for this piece. I thought it would look so pretty with that old rustic vibe to it. So that is what I was going for here. I'm also going to distress it using some of this chalk paint from Waverly in plaster. I'm going to do basically the exact same thing that I did with that wax. I'm just going to go through and distress it all, just not quite as heavy as I did with the wax. Once I've done that and all my paint is dry, I'm going to take some sandpaper and run it over the entire little bench. I wanted to get the wax and the plaster paint to kind of blend in, distress the edges a little bit more, kind of get some of that natural wood to show through. Just give it a little bit more dimension and detail. Now after sanding, I was going to go through and get all of that sanding mess off with a wipe. And when I was doing this, I decided to try my hand at wet distressing. So I'm taking that wipe and I'm just rubbing little parts of the bench harder than I would normally. And it takes off the paint really, really beautifully. I thought that this added such a pretty distressing to this bench, even more than what sandpaper could do. So I'm really happy that I tried this. And this is how my little bench turned out. I absolutely love it. I love it a lot more than I thought that I was going to. I had such a hard time deciding on what color I should paint this. And I think it turned out absolutely adorable. You had me at a low Cause where you go is where I go I don't need nobody else I got you And you got me too You can ride all the blue I wanna do what you want to I picked up this sign from Goodwill. It was $3.49 and I just popped the little house portion off from the front off. I wanted to make that different, do something a little different with it. So I just popped that off and then I'm gonna go in with my Waverly chalk paint in white and I gave the sign two good coats of white paint, making sure to get all the sides and the edges so everything was nice and covered in white. And then once that is all dry, I'm going to take my Waverly Antique Wax and I just took a flat paintbrush and I went down in those grooves on the sign just to really emphasize those lines, make it look a little distressed in there. And then I also took that wax and went around all of the edges just to make it look a little bit more messy, add some definition and some detail to it. Now I'm going to take some scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby in this pack. I thought this pack was so cute with all the flowers and I'm going to take this yellow pattern. I think this is absolutely adorable and I'm just going to trace the house out on top of it. I'm going to take my scissors, cut that house out and then with a glue stick I'm just going to glue the paper down to the house.
Now, I grabbed this little family wood cutout from Hobby Lobby. It was $1.49, and I believe I got it on sale. And I'm going to take my Waverly Wax and Antique, and I just gave this entire thing a good coat, using it as a stain. And then I'm going to take my white chalk paint again, and I just went around the edges like this. I wanted to have it pop out a little bit more so the words weren't just completely blended in. I like the little detail that it gave each of the words. So I just did that and then I'm going to hot glue the house back onto the sign and then I'm going to hot glue the words to the front of the house and that's it for this DIY. I think that this is my favorite because I love those floral colors and it's just it just speaks to me. I'm loving it. Keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground to their wall decor on antique farmhouse and saw this chalkboard with the frame and thought it was really really cute and somehow i happened to find this piece at goodwill that looked basically the same it's actually a hobby lobby piece i paid 450 for it and all i had to do was paint the entire back with my waverly chalk paint and ink i love this paint because i only had to do one coat it covers perfectly really really fast and then to speed up the drawing process I did use my heat gun that I purchased from Amazon I always have this linked in my description box because I do not have time to wait for paint to dry and this speeds up the process so much quicker than just letting it air dry. Once the paint was all dry, I grabbed my measuring tape and I measured two and a half inches from both sides on the top and just marked right at that two and a half inch point. I wanted to take this out to my garage and drill some holes in it. The original picture on the website did have some twine looped through for a hanger, so that's what I wanted to do. I just took some twine and tied several knots at the top. I did want a chunky knot look, so I did tell you about five to six knots for each side and then you could always leave this blank and just use it as a chalkboard but I wanted to add something to it and I wasn't quite sure what I went through my stencils that I have and I had a big pack from Joann's and I found one that I liked and I just wanted to use the bless this home portion so I taped this down and originally I was going to go in with some chalk markers that I had but I wasn't quite feeling that and I decided that I wanted to make it look more like chalk. So I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in white and I'm going to do that same technique for stenciling that I did before with a wet sponge and I'm just going to stencil all over and I just do an up and down motion. If you do side to side, you're going to get a lot of bleeding. In this case, I didn't really mind a little bit of bleeding because I feel like chalk just naturally kind of has a messy look to it. And so I just did one good stencil coat over the entire thing, removed the stencil, and this is what it looked like. I thought it turned out really great and it does, to me, look like some chalk on a chalkboard and I just think it turned out so cute. I'm going to take a little picture that I got from Goodwill. It was $3.49 and I loved the shape of this picture. It was absolutely a mess. It had 
color all over it. I'm assuming kids colored the entire thing, which I can totally relate to because my kids do the exact same thing to all of my stuff. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take that same blue mixture that I did with the candlesticks and I am going to paint a stripe around the entire bottom. I have been loving the two-tone pieces, pictures, vases, anything like that. The two-tone absolutely speaks to me. So I was loving this color and I just thought this would look really, really cute. And then to cover up the rest of the picture, I'm just gonna take some parchment colored chalk paint from Craftsmart. And it's basically the exact same color that the picture already was, but this is gonna cover up all the pen and marker drawings all over there. And I tried to get that bottom stripe as straight as I possibly could, but it wasn't, you know, completely straight, but I think that that kind of adds some character to it. But that's all I had to do for this DIY. Super, super easy. And I think it's such a cute piece sitting next to all of my other home decor. I found this wicker tray at Goodwill for $4.49 and I'm going to take some painter's tape and I taped off about where those handles started on one side and I just use this mostly as a guide uh, because really it's not gonna stick down too well so it mostly just helped me get a straight line and to not go any further than I should and I'm gonna take some rust-oleum white chalk paint and I am going to paint that whole side in this white chalk paint. I'll remove the painter's tape and then I wanted another piece to go with this. So before I show you the final look, I'm gonna take some books that I also picked up from Goodwill and I got these for the look of the books themselves. I'm gonna remove those book covers and I took some tea, now this isn't black tea, so staining it isn't really going to work here, but I was hoping to not get a super dark stain just by using some regular tea, and it didn't really stain it at all, which is my fault, but the main thing that I wanted to do was to add that weathered look to my pages when a book gets wet and the pages start wrinkling a little bit. That's how I wanted my pages to look. So I just took a paintbrush and went over all the pages of my books. And then all I'm gonna do is simply stack these on top of my tray. I think that this looks so cute. And if you look at any of Joanna's Instagram pictures or you know you watch their show, she always has book stacks in the decor and I just think it looks so good. I took two signs from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take a large popsicle stick and I'm going to use some hot glue to attach these signs together. Now I'm gonna flip it to the other side. I'm gonna fill in those holes using some spackle from the Dollar Tree. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna give this entire sign one good coat of my Waverly chalk paint in white. And then once that is all good and dry, I'm gonna take this stencil that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I am going to stencil this over three fourths of the entire sign. So I just used some painter's tape to hold it down and then also to cover the parts that I didn't want accidentally stenciled on there since those patterns are pretty close to each other. I wanted to make sure that I didn't accidentally get those in there. So I just covered up everything that I didn't want stenciled and then I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in mineral and an old makeup brush because I didn't have any kind of stenciling brush at the moment 
So I'm just going to stencil that all on there. Now I didn't want this perfect, so I was kind of messy with it, kind of used, you know, more paint here and less paint there. And I just did this over three fourths of the entire sign. I would just line my stencil back up with the previous part that I had stenciled and go at it again. And I did about three across per row. So in total, I wanna say I did nine of these stencils across the entire sign. And then I just left the bottom portion white and it will make more sense in a minute why I left that white. I kind of wanted that color block look to it. And then I'm also going to add something else to this sign. So I picked up this shelf for $1.49 at my local Goodwill. I'm going to take the hardware off the back, just those sawtooth hangers that have some screws in them. I'm going to remove those, remove all the other stickers and gunk that's on it. And then I'm going to go in with my Waverly chalk paint and agave. I have I've been obsessed with this color lately so I'm gonna go through and paint this entire shelf in this color making sure to get all the little nooks and crannies that are in there and I just gave it one good coat of this And then once I have it all painted, I'm going to take some hot glue and I am going to glue my shelf down to my sign right in the middle where the pattern ends and the white starts. And then I also took my staple gun to the back to secure my shelf to the sign even more. Now I'm going to add a wreath to this. I just took some of this burlap ribbon that I got from burlapfabric.com and I'm just going to hot glue the ribbon to the back of the sign. And that is it for this DIY. I can't help but feeling just loving this moment. Can we stay here forever? I'm loving this moment. Can we stay here together? If I could stop the time, don't you know that I would? Cause I'm just loving this moment. Can we stay here forever? browsing through the tabletop decor on Antique Farmhouse and the first thing that pops up is this beautiful bird votive and I just think this is really really cute with that bird on top and somehow I was able to find almost an exact replica of this in that antique store but this one has some vines and leaves on it i just thought it was absolutely gorgeous i did pay ten dollars and twenty cents for this i took it out to my backyard because i knew that i didn't want it to just be the plain cream color or the brown i wanted to add some color into my pieces so i found this steel blue spray paint from rustoleum and i gave this a good two coats once it was all dry i brought it inside because i wanted to give it a little bit more of an antiqued look since that's the theme that i was going for antiqued and distressed and i just took a paper towel and started rubbing the wax anywhere that i thought that would look good so all over the bird i rubbed it all over the leaves up and down the bars really just about anywhere and that's all I had to do for this DIY. It was really, really easy and I think this color is beautiful and I love how the wax and the steel blue color, I feel like they really complement each other. So I just thought this DIY turned out beautiful.
grab this little lantern that I got for $3.49. I began by taking the glass out of all of it. I just wanted it to be open and not to have the glass in it. So I took it outside. I gave it a good couple coats of some white spray paint. And then all I'm going to do after that is dry is add a candle that I got from Ikea. I'm going to take some of my solo wood flowers on the bottom, just kind of putting them all around the candle in different colors. And I just played around with the arrangement and the colors and had a whole little circle going down around the candle. And then I'm going to take some of this ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue and hot glue this around the top portion of that lantern. I wanted to hide those little pieces that hold the glass in from the outside so that's why I just hot glued it a little bit lower than the top but I think this turned out super super adorable and for $3.49 I have this cute little lantern to display my solo flowers and candle and I just think it turned out absolutely adorable. I wanna know if I let me figure out where the road goes. Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. I'm going to take two 99 cent candle holders that I got from Goodwill. They come apart. They're all attached by a screw. So I was able to unscrew all the pieces, which made it way easier to paint. And for painting, I'm going to take the two middle pieces. So that those kind of wood pieces and then only one of the top parts for where the candle actually sits. I wanted these to be different layers, so I'm going to take one of those out and only use one of them for my candlestick. So I just mixed a couple of my pink colors together to make this blue gray kind of color. And I think it is really, really pretty. And I'm just going to paint all of those pieces in this color. And I did have to do about three coats to each piece. Now I am going to take the bottom pieces of the candlesticks and these two wood plaques that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to mix these paints together to give myself more of like a light caramely kind of color. And I'm going to paint both of my wood round plaques and my two bottom pieces to my candlesticks in this color. With the two metal pieces, I did have to do a couple of coats on there to get those completely covered. And with the wood pieces, I only did one coat. And then I just felt like it looked a little plain. So I did decide to grab a chip brush and some ivory colored paint. And I just did some dry brushing all over the wood plaques and those two metal pieces for the bottom of the candlesticks. And then to adhere it all together, I'm just going to use some clear glue. This is just some clear, I believe, uh, Gorilla Glue. And I'm going to insert that screw back in only for the sake of getting everything nice and straight. I wanted everything to, to be exactly the way it was. But once I had it all on there, I removed the screw. And then for the other one where I'm using the top of that candlestick, I was able to just keep the screw in there and screw everything back together so it was 
all nice and sturdy and then I just use some glue and attach those wood plaques to the top of both of my candlestick pieces. Set them to the side to completely cure and dry. Added some cute little candles to the top. You could probably use bigger candles <laughs> than the ones that I used, but this was all I had on hand. I still think it turned out really cute. Another thing that I thought that would be really cute to do is put some greenery out around the candles and kind of, you know, decorate it even more that way. But I thought the color combo of this turned out really, really cute. And I'm loving this blue gray color. So this one was so much fun to do and it only cost me maybe $4. For this one, I picked up these two candlestick holders. One was $3.49 and the other one was $2.49. Now in the bigger one, there was a big long crack down the side that I did not even see until I actually got home. But it wasn't that big of a deal to me because I could just face it the opposite direction and nobody was going to see it because this is going to sit on top of my kitchen cupboards. So the first thing I do is I'm just going to give it a nice good cleaning and, and once I'm done with that I'm going to go through and give it two good coats of my Waverly chalk paint in white. Once I have those all painted and the paint is dry, I'm going to take my Waverly Wax and Antique and I'm just going to use that to distress both of my candles. These candles had a really pretty design and detail to them, so I wanted to make sure that those really stood out. So I just began distressing, dry brushing all over the entire candlesticks for both of them. And that's all I'm going to do for this DIY. It's really, really easy. I gave it a brand new lift. It looks so much better than it did before, and I'm loving the way this one turned out. I grabbed a wooden tray from Goodwill. This was $3.49 and I thought this was so fun because for $3.49 I had a completely wooden unfinished tray that I could do whatever I wanted with. So I just gave it a little bit of sanding because there were some spots that needed it. I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and plaster and I'm going to paint the entire tray in this color. Now I'm gonna grab this stencil that I picked up in a pack from Joann's and I'm just going to line that all up. I'll cover the parts that I don't want in this particular color. I'll cover them up with some painter's tape as well. I probably wouldn't recommend that because the paper kind of ended up ripping and <laughs> giving me some issues. So if you can find a different way to just be really careful when you're stenciling and not getting it on different pieces that you want on different colors do that i it maybe i should have used some washi tape because apparently tape painter's tape was not a good idea so i'm just going to take my waverly chalk paint and mineral and with a paintbrush i'm just going to do up and down dabbing motions and i'm going to begin painting in my stencil and then for the word beautiful i'm going to take that folk art chalk paint in sage and i stenciled that in with that color and that's all you're gonna have to do for this it's super super easy and i think it turned out absolutely beautiful once all the paint was dry and i took the stencil off i did use some mod podge to seal the bottom that way if i wanted to put anything on it it just is going to protect it from the paint scratching off and that's it for this diy you can use it as a tray or use it as a pretty display piece like i'm showing here Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights
This next project, I'm gonna take this candle holder that I also got from Goodwill. I did pay at $4.49 for it, which is probably on the pricier side, but I thought it was really cool. And the second I saw it, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. So I knew I had to have it. So I just started out by giving it a good cleaning. Now I'm gonna take some twine. I got this from burlapfabric.com. This is a twine that they sent to me. You could also use a Dollar Tree twine. I'm gonna start by intertwining this around each of those little poles. I'm gonna go under one, over one, under one, over one, and I'm gonna repeat that pattern as much as I want on my little candle holder. I made it so that the twine covered about one third of the candle holder. This did take quite some time to do this, so turn on a good movie or a good audiobook when you're doing something like this, but it was really simple to do, just the same pattern over and over and over again, and I think it turns this candle holder into such a really pretty piece. Super boho farmhouse and you can put a candle in here. You could add some greenery in there. Really anything that you wanted to do. I even toyed with the idea of painting some of the twine. I just thought it turned out super super cute and I'm really excited to display it in my home. Now once I got it to the height that I liked it, I just cut off the excess twine and I tied a knot around one of those poles to make sure that the twine would stay in place. And then for that bottom piece of extra twine, I just tied another knot and then cut off the excess. And then I just toyed around with the twine a little bit, kind of moved it as much up as I could without leaving a bunch of gaps. And once I got it to the way that I liked it, I took a little lighter and I fringed off all of the little extra long fuzzies that were on the twine. And that is it for this super cute candle holder. Like I said, I feel like it gives such a good boho slash farmhouse vibe to it and I'm absolutely loving it. found this mango wood candle that I thought was really really pretty and when I was at the brass armadillo shop I found a whole section full of wood bowls and I found these two in a set I only paid six dollars and eighty cents for the two so a little over three dollars each I grabbed some Dollar Tree candles and I melted down the wax by putting them in a pot full of boiling water, let them sit for about 15 to 20 minutes, and I removed the wicks from those candles and super glued them to the bottom of my wooden bowl. Now, forgive the filming for this section. My five-year-old daughter is filming for me, so that's the kind of filming production you're getting here as best as she could do. She was being my helper for a, a minute. So I just super glued those wicks down and then using some hot pads, I'm going to take those candles and with the melted wax, I'm just going to pour the wax inside of the wood bowl. And I did use both of the candles. There was just a little bit of wax left in one. And then this wax did not have any scent to it. So I grabbed my essential oils and poured some orange oil into my candle and then just trimmed down my wicks when the wax was all dry and now I have my own orange scented candle in the wood bowl and I just think it's so fun and the wood bowl and the candle I just love the way they go together so this one was really really fun. This DIY is going to be super, super simple. I picked up these two vases. I'm not sure exactly what you would call them, but 
They were $5.49 each and I loved the flowers and all the detail on these. I think it was absolutely gorgeous. Now, I do think that these had been spray painted a good couple times before. Uh, you could kind of see a couple different colors peeking through some chips here and there in the paint. But I'm just going to take my Coastal Sage spray paint from Rust-Oleum and I'm going to give these a good couple of coats. I did have to try and get in all those nooks and crannies because of all the detail that was on there. So it was a little difficult to get everything covered up. But I am going to take some sandpaper and I'm going to run that sandpaper all over the top portion of these vases and make all the little leaves and flowers stand out. I think it adds such a beautiful detail. And now I have these gorgeous vases that match my home decor colors. And I think these turn out so cute. And I'm going to, to display them on top of my cupboards in my kitchen. You can say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. So this is going to be the easiest DIY of all time. I'm taking this sign that I picked up from Goodwill. I paid about $6.49 for it, so a little bit more on the pricey side, but I loved all the bumps that it had around the frame. I just thought it was so much fun. So all I'm going to do is remove that hanger on the back. I'm going to take it outside. I'm going to give it several coats of Rust-Oleum white glossy spray paint. And then while that's drying, I'm going to take these little knobs or feet that I got in a pack from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to paint them white. I'll hot glue them onto the back of that sign. And that's all you got to do for this DIY. I picked up this vase uh, probably about three years ago, three to four years ago when we first moved into our home. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous and we had it displayed for a really long time. Now, it, things have kind of changed in my decor and it just wasn't matching anymore. So instead of throwing it out or giving it away, I decided to clean it up. I'm going to take some Krylon all-in-one spray paint in white and I am going to spray paint this entire thing. I did do multiple light coats of this just so that it wouldn't get all runny and then I would be having issues. <laughs> so multiple light coats of the spray paint is what I would recommend. I also sprayed painted a little bit of the inside just where you saw the inside of that base. Once that's dry, all I'm going to do is take some sandpaper and distress over this face. It has so many beautiful patterns and really great texture to it that I really wanted to bring that out so that it wasn't getting lost just in that white paint. And just by using my sandpaper and lightly going over that, it's going to remove some of that spray paint so that you can see the dark color that it used to be. And it's really going to make all those patterns and texture pop out. Now I'm going to set this on the top of my cupboard where I have some other decor in my kitchen and I think it looks so pretty up there. I absolutely love it now. It definitely matches way more than it used to and I'm so excited for the way that this DIY turned out. Down. 
get up and start from the ground. And I, I really want to know, really want to know if I let me figure out where the road goes. Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my high. This one is going to be super easy. You can find pieces like this all over any Goodwill or thrift store. This was $3.49. I did just take this piece out to my backyard and I spray painted it with some Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte Spray Paint in Vintage Teal. And I'm going to take these bud vases that you can get from the Target Dollar Spot. It was $3 and I'm going to place all three of those vases inside this little crate. I don't know exactly what they're called, but you know, I'm going to call it a crate. I'm going to cut up some florals and put them down into my vases. And that's it for this DIY. I think this looks super, super cute. I love this teal color and I just think this one is so much fun. I'm going to take this adorable pail that I found at Goodwill. I just thought this was really cute and the flowers and the dragonfly were raised. I just loved it. It was $3.49 so I'm going to start out by just giving the whole thing a good cleaning, wiping the inside out and the outside and I'm going to go in with my Craft Smart paint in parchment. This is just kind of like an off-white yellowy kind of paint. I typically use Waverly chalk paint and plaster, but I have not been able to find Waverly chalk paint at my Walmart. They are like completely gone. Every single shade, every color. I don't know if my store is just sold out and it hasn't been restocked, but let me know if you guys have been able to find it at your Walmart because I would be really, really sad <laughs> if they got rid of it. So I'm just going to paint the entire thing in this color. I did do about two coats on it and then I did go inside a little bit as well so that if you happen to see inside you wouldn't see that yellow shade. And then I wanted the dragonfly and the flowers to be more detailed so that you could actually see them. So I'm gonna take a chip brush and I'm gonna take my Waverly Wax and Antique and I'm just gonna slightly dry brush all over that. And when I was doing this, I decided that I wanted everything to be dry brushed except for that top portion of the pail. So where that top little rim goes around and then you have the top portion, hopefully that's making sense. <laughs> I did not dry brush that section of the pail and I just liked the difference between the two tones of the dry brush and then just the cream. I just thought it was really cute. And then to kind of separate those two layers a little bit more, I'm going to take some twine and t wrap it around a couple of times, tie a double knot. And I did do multiple double knots to add a chunkier knot look to it. And then I'll cut off the excess twine and I'm going to put some florals that I purchased from Michaels. I'm just going to place those in there and arrange them so the handle is up and that's all you got to do for this one. I grabbed these two little planter pots is what I'm going to call them. They were $1.49 each. I'm going to take some painter's tape and I wrapped them around the planters in not a perfect circle. I wanted them to kind of be a different shape. One side be a little bit taller, the other side shorter. If 
that makes any sense. You can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to take that same folk art sage paint and I'm going to paint both of the bottom halves. And then for the second layer, I did add a little bit of baking soda just to give it some more texture. And then I did some dabbing motions all over the bottom portion to help bring that texture out. And I think these turned out really cute. That's all you have to do. All I'm going to do is put some Spanish moss in them, add some succulents and some rocks, and that's it. I think these turned out really, really cute. And now I have these adorable two-tone planters that I think are perfect for succulents. They look so adorable in there. And for $1.49 each, I mean, you can't beat that. These are super heavy pieces. They feel really high-end. They look high-end. Now I got them for $1.49. I got these again from my local Goodwill. I found all three in a set, which I thought was pretty awesome. The smallest one was $3.49, the biggest one was $5.49, and then the middle was $4.49. They were a bit beat up and damaged. As you can see, this lid looks like it has some water damage to it. So I decided to take the lids off and I took them into my garage and sanded them down. It did take me quite a while <laughs> to get that first layer off just because it was pretty damaged and they are definitely not perfect in the end but I think that's what adds some good character to them. So I'm just going to take those lids and I'm going to stain them with my Minwax stain in golden oak and I thought that this gave it a really pretty look to it and it matched pretty well with what the color was beforehand. Now, for whatever reason, when I stained the middle one, which is the one that had that water damage on it, it didn't take to the stain like the other two did, so I'm not quite sure why that was, but in the end, I still think that they all turned out really cute. And then for the jars, I took them outside and I'm going to spray paint them with this Rust-Oleum glossy paint. I wanted that glossy finish to it, so I just went through and gave it a couple of light coats. And then I just cut this out with my Cricut. It just says coffee, sugar, and flour. And I used my transfer tape to apply those. Now I did have an issue with my sugar one. The transfer tape decided to pull up some of the spray paint. So I ended up having to go back out and spray paint the paint that came off of it. Uh, but in the end, it all worked out perfectly. I just made sure that my decals were all the same height so that they all looked cohesive. And then I just applied the lids back on top of the jars. And then I thought that it would be so cute for these to sit on top of my kitchen cupboards. And I mean, honestly, you could set these anywhere. You could put them on your counters. But I just thought that they would add a really cute decorative piece to the top of my kitchen cabinets and I thought they turned out so cute. And that's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you got so much inspiration from all 30 of these DIYs. Go thrifting, check out your Goodwills, check out your antique shops, and make some of your own home decor. Don't forget to subscribe before you guys leave. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!